Hey everyone, let's get to tonight. So what are prophets? Prophets are people in the Old Testament who were called by God to speak truth to power. Essentially, they would tell the people in charge what they were doing wrong. Some of them uh, just show up in the Bible's history books, uh, but some of them had so much to say they got their whole own book in the Bible. Uh, the big books are the major prophets and the little books are the minor prophets. Most prophets have a really interesting origin story. Um, and even though the details are different from each one, each one, um, the theme is the same. Uh, they receive a distinct call from God to go and give a specific message to a specific community. This usually involves repenting, which means acknowledging your mistake and then turning back to God or else bad things are gonna happen. Once the prophet gets the call, they are not there for it. They fight God and they argue that they can't do it for some reason. And God's like, uh, yeah, you, you definitely can and you will. And eventually they're like, okay, fine. And then they do it because it's God. So why do you think all of the prophets have a similar origin story? Well, <laughs> it's because being a prophet was awful. Remember, the main message they had to give to people was to repent and to do better. How many people do you know that just love being told that uh, they're doing something wrong and they need to change? Do you love that? Um, how many times have your parents or teachers or coaches said to you, hey, you know, you completely screwed this up and now you need to fix it or else? Literally no one likes it. So prophets were by and large hated and rejected by the communities that they were preaching to. There are times when they were received well um, and the communities do change, but they did not know ahead of time if that was gonna be the case. So it was still this huge risk. But typically only a few people listened and repented, um, and, but everybody else wanted to run the prophets out of town or kill them, so. A lot of the Old Testament boils down to uh, God telling the people the best way to live and then the people not listening and then they suffer the bad consequences from those decisions. God comes in and saves them and then um, it just repeats over and over and over again. So this theme continues with the prophets. Uh, their role in these stories is to be the messenger from God telling the people, hey, you're screwing up. Um, stop it, <laughs> stop, pull it together, dummies. If you read the books, um, you will read a lot of specific ways that people screwed up, but the main way was that people just either didn't follow God's law or they followed God's law but didn't follow the spirit of it, which is to love God and to love your neighbors. For example, something that nearly every prophet said is that God desires mercy rather than sacrifice. In the time of the prophets, if you broke a law, you had to go to the temple and sacrifice something like an animal or grain to make this right with God again. It was designed to hold you accountable and to help you change. But instead, what happened was people just kept on sinning and kept making sacrifices and thought because of that, they were all good. And God was like, um, I don't really care about your sacrifices because you keep going out and doing things that harm yourself or harm other people. So I would much rather have you live your life by showing mercy to others. Another theme that pops up in the prophets a lot is justice. You may be following the letter of the law, but are you seeking justice for your neighbors? The verse we are reading tonight talks about justice and is a really popular one. So you've probably heard it several different places. It was on our t-shirts for our mission journeys. Uh, so if you went on those, we discussed that verse. Kirsten Rose, our very talented director of modern worship arts, uh, wrote a song all about that verse. It's from the prophet Micah 6, 8. What does the Lord require of you but to live justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. So there's that mercy word again, just pointing that out. Um, living justly goes right along with that. Justice is simply all people living with the same opportunities. So if you're following the laws about like what food to eat, but you're not, but not following the laws that talk about caring for the orphans and widows and the sick, you're not living justly because you're not lifting up the people who are suffering the most from this broken world. 
So hopefully next time you hear this popular scripture, Micah 6, 8, it won't be just another random scripture verse. Micah was a real prophet who spoke these challenging words and was hated for it. Prophetic words are tough to hear. If you've spent enough time around me, you know that one of the things I am passionate about is seeing just how applicable the ancient document known as the Bible is truly relevant to our lives in this century. We as a people still hate being told we're wrong. When someone points something out to us that we could do better, we get defensive and we lash out at the messenger or the manager. Um, we prefer to live in a cocoon where we can tell ourselves that we're fine, everything else is fine, and we don't need to work towards change. We tell ourselves that when people point out an injustice in the world, that they are the ones causing division rather than the injustice itself. So a common question that you hear in religious academic circles today is whether or not prophets exist in the modern day. I think the point could be argued well in either direction, but honestly, I don't think it matters because we all have Bibles. We can easily read the words from the prophets 2000 years ago, and they speak loudly and clearly to our world. Sure, it uses some proper names that you might not be able to understand or pronounce, um, sometimes makes some references to Hebrew culture that are like, well, what's going on? But when you read beyond that, the message is still very applicable. So you're following the laws of the land, but are you acting justly? You're following the rules of the household, but are you giving mercy? You may be passing your classes or killing it at your job, but are you walking humbly with your God? If you're not, are you going to hear these words and repent? Or will you lash out in anger? Will you allow the prophets to speak to you and to let God change your heart? The prophets kept telling people to repent and to live justly, and mostly they didn't. Before the prophets, God told the people, the kings, the judges, the patriarchs, all the way back to Adam and Eve, to repent and to love their neighbors. And mostly they didn't. We have demonstrated over and over and over again that we don't learn, that we don't get better, and we all suffer as a result of that. So God steps in and sends Jesus, who the New Testament is all about. While Jesus was here on earth, he was a prophet. He lived justly, he loved mercy, and he walked humbly with God. He showed us how it was done. And then he gave his life for us, one last sacrifice to make things right with God forever. So that even when we fail at this over and over again, we know that we are forgiven. Instead of collapsing from the burden of trying to live perfectly, we can instead live in perfect relationship with God and allow that love to pick us up when we fail and then spur us on toward a life full of love, mercy, and justice.